The Las Vegas Raiders want guard John Simpson to start at right guard, according to Vic Tafer. Vic Tafer's a good inside source, man, and apparently Yard Barker put this article out, and apparently we all missed it. We didn't see the article, and we didn't see the comment. Um, but as you guys know, the Raiders revamped their offense line, right? Recently, we just got Alex Leatherwood. Uh, prior to that, we re-signed Colton Miller, and we re-signed... I know I shouldn't say re-signed. We extended Andre James. Uh, and we revamped the offense line, right? We brought back Richie Incognito. Denzel Good had gotten himself an upgrade as well and apparently now they want the fourth round pick john simpson to start at right guard now before we move forward i want to just remind you guys to hit that thumbs up button smash that subscribe button if you guys are not already subscribers at the same time i have premium content that i put out on this channel specifically um, you know there will be a time when the youtube says hey you can no longer use the all 22 film at that point i don't really know what's going to happen with this channel but if you guys want to support, uh, in case that were to ever happen, becoming a premium member to the channel would be the best way to support the channel. Uh, there's a join button if you just scroll down if you're watching on a mobile phone. If not, you can also do it on your computer or your laptop. Uh, you hit the join button, you become a member, you select whatever tier, and you get access to a ton of premium content. With that, let's just jump right back into this video. Uh, John Simpson starting at right guard. Now, I want to know what you guys think about that. Uh, I personally would not be disappointed if John Simpson was ready to make the start. Now, if he started at right guard, that means Denzel Good will, uh, will basically go to the bench, right? Um, we'd have John Simpson at right guard, Andre James at center, uh, or maybe it's Nick Martin. We'll see who wins that job. At left guard, I, I believe it would obviously be Richie Incognito because he is up there in age. He's in his last couple of years anyways. Left tackles Colton, right tackles Alex Leatherwood. Either way, if John Simpson were to start, and I'll be the first to tell you guys, when I watched John Simpson play, um, I think he initially came in week two, and then he played a, a couple weeks after that, and then I, I think eventually he got replaced. But when I watched him play initially, I did not like his film. And I re-watched him recently, and I watched, I think he played in week 17. I re-watched that game, and he looked much better he looked more improved he looked more confident everything about him looked way better and here's the thing right the Raiders have if not the best one of the best coaches in the entire league at the offensive line position so if there's one guy that can get all these guys right if there's one guy that can improve Andre James and Alex Otherwood and turn those guys into superstar players why wouldn't he be able to do that with John Simpson I have faith in Tom Cable, man. I think Tom Cable is a very good coach. Let's get into the article. Uh, and we'll just start it off right here. We'll, we'll skip past the intro part of it. Uh, but Yard Barker or, or Pro Football Rumors writes, As Vic Tafer of The Athletic writes, the Raiders would like Simpson to replace Jackson as the starter at right guard. Uh, in, in parentheses, he writes, The article was written for the draft, but given that Las Vegas only high-level O-line pick was used on, on Leatherwood, the club's expectations with respect to Simpson presumably hasn't changed. The Raiders did re-sign Denzel Good as a fallback plan if Simpson isn't ready, and Good also provides some insurance at right tackle in case Leatherwood should struggle. Now here's the thing, right? Cohen Miller gave up what 17 sacks his rookie year, and he finished the whole entire year. There's no way uh, Alex Leatherwood's gonna give up like six, seven, eight sacks and we replace him with Denzel Good. That's not going to happen. Um, Either way, I, I totally disagree with this article. I, I think they're maybe taking what Vic Tafer wrote out of context. At the same time, if Vic Tafer does beat John Simpson is going to beat out Denzel Good, then I would disagree with Vic Tafer because even though I like John Simpson, even though I liked what I saw last year, and I know he's going to make improvements from year one to year two, I think Denzel Good's a better football player, man. There's just no way around it. Denzel Good has has had a good, uh, solid career, right? Like, he's been a backup. He's kind of came in. He's played tackle, guard, uh, right side, and left side. Uh, and now with the Raiders, he filled in last year and pretty much played the whole entire year for us. And he was a great offensive lineman. Brandon Thorne had him ranked in his top five most underrated offensive linemen. And Brandon Thorne is probably one of, like, the three or four smartest offensive lineman gurus out there, right? Uh, especially when it comes to uh, being online and having like that build uh, that that uh, social platform and having that following, uh, he's the guy, man, and he sees Denzel Good and he sees sees that he's an underrated player, and I agree with him. Um, I don't see Denzel Good not being the Raiders' starting right guard. I think 
it could make sense if John Simpson started at right guard because maybe they want uh, Denzel Good to play left guard, right guard, or right tackle as a backup or possibly left tackle in case Colt Miller to get hurt. Either way, I think most likely John Simpson does not start at right guard. What do you guys think about that? Let me know in the comments below. Let's jump forward and get into the next article. Uh, what would be the price of the Raiders trading for Aaron Rodgers? Now, here's the interesting thing, right? We know that the Raiders are most likely not going to trade for Aaron Rodgers. At the same time, we know that the Denver Broncos are likely to trade for their, for Aaron Rodgers. At least that's what the rumors are, right? Uh, I've been hearing that there's a good, just a good chance that Aaron Rodgers will be with the Broncos this year. We'll see if that happens. If not, not a big deal. Um, obviously, I guess it is a big deal for us Raider fans because at the end of the day, for us personally, it's going to hurt us if Aaron Rodgers goes to the Broncos because that's just another team in our division with a really good quarterback. Um, at that point, you know, Carr is what, the third, fourth best quarterback in the division, right? Um, at the same time, the article says, what would it cost? Uh, what would the Raiders, ha uh, what would the Raiders have and want to offer for Rodgers? ESPN recently made seven proposals for teams and the Raiders offering was ranked the sixth best. The meat of the proposed, again by ESPN, the Las Vegas proposal was quarterback Derek Carr. First and second round picks in 2022 and a 2023 first round picks. So what they're saying is this. The Raiders would trade Derek Carr, two first round picks and a second round pick for Aaron Rodgers and a fourth round pick. That makes no sense to me. Like, first of all, who you know, obviously I see ES Payne came up with this with this trade scenario. First of all, why would the Raiders trade Derek Carr? And why would the Packers want Derek Carr? What, what did the Packers get by getting Derek Carr? The Packers have their quarterback. Jordan Love is the Packers quarterback. And the only reason the Packers would move on from Derek, uh, from uh, Aaron Rodgers is if they in themselves are confident that their guy is Jordan Love and they're ready for him to take over. It doesn't make sense to invest a first round pick on a quarterback and not let him at least have an opportunity. If you got Derek Carr, that's your quarterback for the next 10 years. So that makes zero sense. At the same time, giving up two first round picks and a second round pick for a 38 year old quarterback, the Raiders roster is not good enough to compete for a Super Bowl, right? We're not there right now. And, and maybe we are, right? But we haven't seen it. We have to have Gus Bradley prove it first. So until Gus Bradley is able to take this defense and prove that our roster is there, doesn't make a ton of sense if you ask me. Finally, let's re-talk about the Raiders schedule because yesterday I was looking at it with you guys live and that was the first time I had ever looked at it. Uh, and I, I kind of looked at it again last night and I thought to myself, okay, there's definitely some teams that I think are going to give us issues. At the same time, I think there's teams that could beat us. Realistically speaking, you know, the, the game of football comes down to any given week, right? Uh, if the football bounces right versus bouncing left, if Diablo picks it off as opposed to dropping as opposed to dropping that interception, that's gonna have a huge impact. So when we look at our schedule, right? We look at the Baltimore Ravens, the the Steelers. Those are losable games for the Raiders, but at the same time, they're also winnable games, right? We can lose either of those games. We can win either of those games. So those are gonna be the tough games, right? Uh, I would argue that the Steelers and the Ravens are the hardest team we're gonna play this year. The two hardest teams. Uh, number three, and, and this could even be number one, but number three is pr probably the Washington football team. I think that's going to be the third hardest team we play this year. Um, and I'm not saying they're the best teams, right? Because I think the Chiefs are, are probably the best teams out of all those, all three of those teams. Uh, but we play the Chiefs every year, so we're used to playing the Chiefs. So I don't think for the Raiders that that's that hard. I, I, I think for the most part, that's a uh, it's an easier game, right? As opposed to playing the Ravens or the Steelers who you see once every four years. And the thing is, is both of those teams are playoff teams. Um, the Washington football team, the only way the Raiders would see them again after week 13 is if we see them in the Super Bowl, which is a strong possibility, right? If the Raiders make the Super Bowl, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if, if we're playing the Washington football team. It could absolutely happen. Uh, regardless, the Ravens, Steelers, tough games. We can win both. We could lose both. The Dolphins, Chargers, Bears, Broncos, Eagles, we should win all of those games. There's no excuses. If we are the type of offense we think we are and the type of defense that we think us Bradley could build for us, we should have no issues with those games. We should win every single one of those games. 
Um, at the same time, after our bye, we have the Giants, the Chiefs, the Bengals, uh, the Cowboys, right? Those are the next four games. We should be able to win at least three of those games. There's no reason for us not to be able to beat the Giants, the Bengals, the Cowboys. We're better, or if not better, we're right there with those three teams. Like, the Giants and Bengals, for sure, there's no way they're a better team than us. The Cowboys, maybe, right? They have, they have a good quarterback. They have good offensive weapons. They just got Michael Parsons. They already have two other good linebackers. They have a pretty good defensive line. Uh, the Cowboys had, I think, a top five defense like two or three years ago. I don't really know what happened with, with that and, and how it kind of fell off, but they had a good defense, and um, if they can get back to form, they're, they're going to be a real good team, but uh, for the Raiders specifically, you know what's interesting that we're playing the Chiefs week 10 and week 14, like, I wish we were playing in Kansas City early on, just how we, we, we did last year, right, because uh, the temperature drop, that's going to make a big difference. At the same time, we play Cleveland in week 15, that's probably going to be a bad temperatured game as well, um, but there's no reason why we should not be able to beat the Giants, the Bengals, uh, the the Chargers, the Dolphins, the Bears, the, you know, the, the Chargers and Broncos. I guess technically the Chargers and Broncos twice. There's no reason. If we are the team that we think we are, um, I, I think the teams, the three hardest teams are going to be the Steelers, the Ravens, and the Washington football team. I think the Washington football team has the most complete roster, man. They took Samuel Cosby and Jamin Davis, two players that I loved. Now, if you guys are not subscribers to my second channel, I broke down both of those guys before they were drafted. And I had both of those guys ranked super high. Uh, I had Jamin Davis as my number two linebacker. Uh, and Washington took him with the 19th overall pick. Uh, they took him ahead of guys like Jock and, and Nick Bolton and some of these other linebackers that went a little bit later on. Um, I love Jamin Davis, man. I, I really love Jamin Davis. Um, at the same time, they took Samuel Cosme, who I had ranked higher than Alex Leatherwood. All right, I said Alex Leatherwood was my sixth ranked offensive tackle. My fifth ranked offensive tackle was Samuel Cosme. And the football Washington football team got him up like the 50th or 51st pick. So somewhere around there. They got him in the second round. So I think the Washington football team will be a really good team this year. I'm really pumped up for the season to start. Um, you know, I don't I don't think preseason's getting the the amount of love that it deserves. <laughs> we'll be playing the uh, Seattle Seahawks. Um at home, that'll be for us. That'll be technically our first first game in the Las Vegas Stadium. Then we'll play, be playing the, the LA Rams in LA. Then we'll be playing the Niners in the Niners Stadium, which I might attend, man. That game's right down the street for me. So uh, I might attend that game. It's not down the street. It's like, like 45 minutes away. But I might attend that game because it's right there in the Niners Stadium. Uh, again, that's assuming we have a preseason. But... I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to hit that thumbs up button. Uh, yesterday, I was super tired. I had woken up at like 4.45. Uh, today, I actually just decided to sleep a little bit more. So now I have a ton of work to catch up on. So I'm going to get started on that. I hope you guys all have a great day. I hope you guys have a great weekend. And I'll see you guys next time with another video.